Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Rick DeYoung. I'm the Artist and Educator Relations Manager here at KHS America. We'd like to invite you to our sixth of seventh series that we are doing for you. And just to let you know, if this is your first time here, at the end of this clinic, you should receive an email within an hour with your certificate for your professional development. Uh, also, I'd like to let you know that on the right side of the screen, you will see a chat section and I encourage you to get engaged with not only our great clinic we have today, but also with the other people who are in attendance. And if you have a question, click on the question button and ask your question there so that the guys can see it and we'll be able to answer it. At the conclusion or near the end of this event, I will come back on stage to let you know about next week's clinic. And so um, we are very excited to have these two gentlemen with us today. Um, very well um recognized in the mariachi world and they put together a really great clinic for everybody today not just about how to do a mariachi uh, program but also the benefits it can have for your students so we're excited to bring to this stage our two clinicians for this evening uh, ramon and oscar hello everybody welcome to our clinician my name is Ramon Rivera, and I am the director of the Mount Vernon High School Mariachi, and I've been teaching Mariachi for about 21 years in California, Wenatchee, and now in Mount Vernon. And I'm just really excited about you joining us today because today is to tell you how exciting it is to have a Mariachi program at your school. I want to turn it over now to my good friend, uh, Mr. Oscar, is going to tell you about himself and about Mariachi music. Welcome, everyone. Bienvenido. Uh Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Oscar Garibay. I'm a mariachi director here in Southern California in Santa, um, California. Uh, I've been teaching mariachi for about five years and have been playing professionally uh, for about 10, 11, maybe 12 years. So I have a lot of experience uh, performing mariachi. Um, and uh, yeah, we're really excited to, to be here to share the passion, the, the, the gospel of mariachi and mariachi education. So we're all really excited to uh, be able to share this information to you guys. If by any chance you guys have any questions, anything at all about our presentation, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, you know, I'm going to be like really uh, focused on the presentation. But if I happen to just miss a question, just repost it and hopefully I'll be able to catch it next time. OK, let's go ahead and start. So here is. Uh, uh, mariachi education. All right, let's go to the next slide. All right, we're gonna start off with a uh, with a short video. Um, this video pretty pretty much embraces everything that we're kind of gonna talk about uh, today. Hope you guys really enjoy it. It's gonna talk about uh, a very successful mariachi program in Las Vegas. They're really been spearheading mariachi education the last uh, uh, two decades or so, and they've brought on a really powerful program in that district. They have about 36 full-time mariachi directors in that district alone, uh, Clark County School District, and they uh, they teach over 6,000 mariachi students. It's just phenomenal what they do there. Let's go ahead and watch this video on uh, Monocle Middle School. This middle school has three mariachi directors and they teach over 600, I think, students, 700 students who are all in the mariachi program. Again, this is a middle school that we're talking about. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring this video up and enjoy. It's an ordinary Tuesday at Monaco Middle School. The bell rings at the end of the school day. The students empty out of the buildings. And the once noisy hallways become very quiet. But from the fine arts hallway, a new sound emerges. It's the sound of one of the best middle school mariachi bands in the country. Mariachi Los Gavilanes de Monaco Middle School. Led by passionate instructors Daniel Valdez and Yvette Sital. This group is much different than a traditional school band or orchestra performance group. A mariachi group is uh, it plays music that's native to Mexico, usually in Spanish. But what's unique about the mariachi is we use a guitarron and a vihuela, which is which are indigenous to Mexico. 
We get to wear different costumes. We have the sombreros, the, the nice tie here, a nice traje de charro is what we call it. So when you see a mariachi group, they stand out quite a bit from other ensembles, yes. I feel the mariachi programs are important in Las Vegas area because the population of Hispanics is very, very high. And having the mariachi program in the schools, it's allowing them to embrace their, their her heritage and culture. For many students in the group, their love of mariachi music was passed down from older members of their families. I grew up like listening to the mariachi music and I was like, oh, this is really nice. So my family supports me and without them, like I wouldn't be here right now. My brother used to be in Mariachi Los Avilanes um, about two years ago. So I would hear him and like it really made me like proud of him. And I was, I really liked that music. Like I really wanted to be part of it too. I feel really great because I'm getting back into like my Hispanic roots and really feeling um, how they used to feel when they used to play their instruments. The group rehearses three times a week, including a four-hour rehearsal every Saturday morning. And the funny thing is, you know, nine in the morning on a Saturday, the kids are here before the teachers. Um, they want to be here, like you said. They, they're excited to be here. Most of the time, they're outside practicing before they can even get in the building. And all that hard work is evident in their performances, from taking the top honors in national competitions to performing at special events in the city alongside famous musician Carlos Santana, the young group rises to every challenge with determination and excitement. What I like about performing is that you get, you just like get yourself into music. You don't think about anything else. If there's something going on in your family or like a problem you're having, uh, like you forget it while you're playing. It makes me feel great because all of our months of hard works really pays off in that moment where it all comes together. When people clap and like, you know, they're dancing along when you perform and when you finish, you're just like, ah, oh, you feel nice about it because, you know, you, you feel you accomplished something. And with everything the group has been able to accomplish, you'd never know they were only in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Sometimes, at times, I have to step back whenever I listen to, to my students perform because at the level they're, they're playing at, some people believe that they're playing at a high school level. Some people even think that they're high school students whenever they perform. We have to specify that this is the Monaco Mariachi Middle School. It really impresses me. I mean, I feel very honored to get to work with, with these students. Whenever we will arrange a, a song for them, I'm looking at it on our, on our computer file and I'm like, there's no way these kids are gonna do it. Um, we hand out the music and, you know, a week later, we're p performing it, you know, so they're, they're always surprising me. Um, the kids are coming in, you know, every other week. Hey, mister, can we try this song? I heard this song on the radio or my brother in high school is learning this song. You think we can do it? The D7, the quarter notes on measure 11, 12, 13, 14. Chan, chan, chuck, taka, chuck, taka, chuck, taka, chuck. That drive and determination to succeed carries over from the music room to the rest of the classrooms at Monaco Middle School. The response that I get from the parents, as far as music, their musicality, they're always impressed. They love the fact that their, their, their student is in this program. And not only that, but academically, you know, I have parents always tell me, my kid is doing really good in school because of your program. So in addition to learning music, the kids also learn great, great life skills, valuable life skills, um, you know, caring about how they dress, how they look, you know, showing up to work on time, you know, um, things like that. Um, cooperation, teamwork, um, work ethic, things that are required of us as adults and these kids are, are, are doing it here. My goal isn't to have every one of my students to uh, be professional musician, you know. My goal for my students is to be professional human beings. I want them to be res respectable and, you know, um, just all around great people. <laughs> 
it's clear to see that their time in the mariachi program has made an impact on these young students' lives. I really want to keep on like playing the instrument I play, violin, because I really like it. And yeah, I'm actually going to Las Vegas Academy, which is an academy of the arts. And um, I auditioned for, to play in mariachi, the violin, and I got the opportunity to go to that school. <laughs> I am very proud to have learned how to play the harp because, you know, it's like a very unique instrument. I hope I can somehow make it a career in some sort, maybe doing something that I love, like playing an instrument, really, really makes me happy. It, it's a, like an honor to play mariachi, and especially with people you love. Mariachi Los Gavilanes de Monaco Middle School is a part of the heart of Las Vegas because we are teaching kids the connection between their community and culture, and we're celebrating the diversity of Las Vegas. Awesome. So that was a really good video, pretty much wrapping up everything that we're going to talk about in this in this presentation. You guys can see that, you know, mariachi education right now is just bubbling up in many parts of the country, everywhere. Southern California, Vegas, it's huge in Texas, even in the Midwest you're getting mariachi programs kind of bubbling up and getting a lot of attention. Uh, the thing is that, you know, mariachi um, or music education in general is um, it's, it's evolving, you know, we're accepting more ensembles, emerging methods, and mariachi is a really good ensemble that's um, a really popular ensemble now that's just being asked and demanded for everywhere and every administrator. And the reason why is, is it's, it's, it's really obvious that, you know, the Hispanic culture, the Hispanic community has just been growing um, a lot. But, you know, it, it's not just that. Um, because many cultures play mariachi music. I mean, all over South America, even all over uh, Europe, there's, there's European countries that have mariachi there, like Croatia, Sweden. One of the most prominent mariachi educators, uh, Mark Fogelquist, he has like Swedish like heritage, you know? It's just, it's insane. Mariachi music is, is, is you know, compare it to jazz education when it started getting integrated into the program. Now, obviously jazz was very American, um, so it was e more. It was easier to kind of inter int uh, integrate it into music education. But kind of think of mariachi education in that sort of um, comparison, where right now um, it's starting to bubble up in K twelve education and in higher education as well. I know here in my area in Southern California, Chapman University starting a mariachi program. Long Beach, uh, Cal State Long Beach, uh, Cal State LA, UCLA has a uh, has actually the first collegiate mariachi program ever that got started in nineteen sixties. It's just it's it's everywhere. Um, so so nation um, nationwide, it's the biggest, the fastest growing music programs nationwide are mariachi programs, because it's a way to connect. If you look at the demographics of the United States, about twenty percent is Latino, and some schools like Oscar School and my school are at seventy to eighty percent Latino. So that means that they want to find music that they re could relate to, and so it gives you another option between band, choir, orchestra, or mariachi and guitar ensembles, marimba ensembles. I think more guitar ensembles and more mariachi ensembles are, is being more popular at, at schools. And I'm here in the Pacific Northwest, so even 3,000 miles from Mexico, there's a mariachi program. So, you know, and, and I'm near the Canadian border. So, you know, I'm an hour from the Canadian border and there's a mariachi program, so it's, it's huge. Yeah, and to spearhead that as well, it's not just district was a really large Hispanic uh, you know, demographic. I mean, there's districts out there that have maybe like, mm -hmm. we want to say maybe like 50% white, 40% Asian, 10% um, Hispanic. The, the the region where I, or the city that I grew up, Davis, California, was like that. And they're starting a mariachi program. The thing is that when you look at uh, music education and you look at how, you know, students kind of progress from elementary to high school, at the, at the elementary level, you have a very um, well balanced variety of ethnicities at the at the elementary at the elementary music levels as they get to middle school you start noticing hispanics kind of dropping out of music either because they have to take a, like a remedial course they have to take an extra english course an extra math course and you start getting um, more white students more um asians kind of um predominantly taking over the music program when, when you when you look at these programs you look at the high school level you rarely see a, a Latino in the music program, even if there's like a really large demographic in the district uh, of mariachi. So, you know, um, 
uh, demographic of, of, of Latino. So mariachi is a way that admins has, have kind of been using to kind of encourage um, the Latinos to continue on to school and to encourage them to that there's a, you know, there's, there's, there's something for them. Um, it, it's, it's just really unfortunate how sometimes um, Hispanics feel like they're being left out in their schooling. And uh, admins are just trying to figure out another way to get them engaged in, in school. Okay, let's go ahead and move on because um, on, on, we can talk on and on and on and we can ramble on, um, but you know, it's, it, we just don't have enough time. So uh, really fast, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about just mariachi, what it is in case you're, you, you just don't know what it is. I, I'm sure most of you guys already have some basic information on mariachi, so I'm just gonna go really, really fast through this. Um, but I just wanna make sure that we're all, um, have a common ground and what knowledge we have. Okay, so um, this is a mariachi. Obviously, these are these are my students from Santa Ana High School. They have really nice outfits. Uh, they they stand up tall. They're really proud because they're representing their culture. The way they wear their suits is pretty much them representing all of Mexico and like the flag and what that represents. So for them, it's really proudful for them to um, wear that suit and to play this music, which gives them a lot of self esteem. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so what is mariachi, okay? Mariachi is traditional folkloric music from Mexico. And what I mean by folkloric is that it's music of the people. It's music that was gathered in little towns of the folk in families that kind of like spread around in the folk. Um, uh, and to kind of like say it really, really fast, mariachi basically was born in Jalisco. It really was born all over Mexico, but in general, it was really uh, in Jalisco, which is the red highlighted state that you see there in the southwest uh, corner of, of Mexico. And again, mariachi pretty much represents all the symbols of, of Mexico's national identity. Um, there's a couple of theories of uh, what mariachi actually means. Mariachi isn't actually a Spanish word. Um, there isn't a... Um, there isn't an exact answer for the translation of mariachi, but people think, or historians think, that it comes from the word either from the Nahuatl language joy, mariachi, or um, that um, that mariachi comes from the word mariache, which is the wood platform that the ballet folkloricos dance to. Because oftentimes ballet folkloricos, these dancers, um, would dance with the mariachi accompanying them. There are other, uh, there are other theories as well, mariage with the French word, uh, because the French, when they were... Um, inhabiting Mexico. And along with the Spaniards, French would see um, mariachis performing a lot in weddings. So they would call them mariage or mariachis. All right. So the modern mariachi ensemble consists, it's a very small ensemble. It's kind of like a jazz band, um, about around 14 to 15 players. You have six to seven violins, two to three trumpets, a harp, a guitarron, a vihuela, and guitar. Okay. If you're a music educator, you've probably been familiar with all the instruments except for guitarron and vihuela. Those are the two foreign instruments or the two native instruments in mariachi, okay? So we're gonna talk a little bit about those two instruments because you will need to know about those instruments if you're thinking of, um, of starting a mariachi program in your school, okay? The other instruments, you guys could, you guys know a lot about violin, trumpet, you guys know all about those instruments. All right, so we're gonna start off with the, the vihuela. Um, I don't know, Ramon, if you can probably demonstrate uh, how the sure. vihuela looks like, maybe some differences between the vihuela and the guitar. Um, some clear differences between a vihuela and a guitar is that a vihuela has five strings. It, it omits the sixth string from the guitar. So it starts with A, D, G, B, E, uh, five, four, three, two, one, sorry. Um, uh, and oh, a unique characteristic of the vihuela I don't know, Ramon, if maybe you can strum uh, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so look, so, so um, today's presentation is sponsored by KHS America, and one of the companies, one of the members of KHS uh, of the American Alliance is H. Jimenez, and what was really great is I worked with KHS on an H. Jimenez guitars on designing this vihuela, back, um, I don't know, seven years ago. And what was really great about this vihuela, it's very durable and it's well made and it added frats. And also I added straps for middle school students so that they could have it. So yes, as, as a basic strumming, it's like a G and mostly in first position, G, C, D7, D, and also has like, um, usually different kind of strummings, like a sewn pattern. So 
this is the mariachi vihuela. Because there's a vihuela in Spain, but this is the mariachi vihuela. And uh, if if you look at the vihuela, uh, there's also a um, a common family member. The European lute actually looks very very similar to the vihuela, and I'm pretty sure it's probably a descendant from that. You know, as Spaniards started conquering or inhabiting Mexico, uh, they brought their instruments with them. Um, yeah. So that's that's the vihuela. The strumming patterns that he was playing are called manicos. That's just the Spanish word for it. Um, and uh, mariachi calls for not just chord playing, but also a lot of rhythmic playing. You can think of the vihuela kind of like a, like a rhythm section, right? Or the guitarron and the vihuela as the, as the rhythm section of the jazz band. Um, the the armonia or the the vihuela kind of strums the rhythms, the manicos or the strumming pattern, um, and also provides the the chords. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next instrument, which is the guitarron. Guitarron in Spanish translates to the big guitar. Guitarron, guitar, ron, big guitar, or guitar big. Um, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just a big guitar. <laughs> um, it has six strings. Um, a, D, G, C, E, A. And something very unique with the guitarron is that when you pluck the strings, you play them in octaves. So you're, it's a double stop instrument. You're playing two strings at once, um, unlike other bass instruments. Okay, so uh, Ramon, I don't know if you could uh, demonstrate yeah, just so how a guitarron sounds like. This is H. Uh, Jimenez, um, guitarron. It's, I, I, I helped with the design process on this one too, but it's super hard. Um, it's very durable. It's very good for um, beginner and middle school mariachi. So like what you do is somebody said C, and then we do D, and then we do E, and then F, G, A, B, C. So when we're playing guitarron on here, we're playing two strings at the same time, like C, 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 A. So you're going. And um, Hal Leonard recently came out with a new guitarron book. Um, I think my friend Herman came out with it. So there's a lot of guitarron resources and I left my email. So I have a whole bunch of free re resources that I don't mind sharing with you. And I know Oscar has a whole bunch of free resources that we share with you um, because you mostly got trained in band or orchestra. Um, the, the thing you would have to learn first is guitarron and vihuela because um, most of you took a beginning guitar class and and we'll talk about the guitar next, but this is the guitarron. And Sia has a, uh, and you could get that at your local music store. And I'm going to be talking about where you could purchase um, the guitarrons. Yeah, as uh, as Ramon was saying, you know, a lot of a lot of you guys, a lot of music educators who are watching this. Oh, oopsies. Um, a lot of music educators are watching this. Um, a lot of you guys are probably coming from like the band tradition or the orchestra tradition, um, and the question that was first asked was talking about, you know, teaching in the authentic manner. Um, mariachi traditionally is learned by ear. Everything is, is by, is by rote. Um, so if you're not familiar learning by rote, don't worry. I don't want you to get discouraged of teaching mariachi because there's a lot of mainstream, um, uh, materials that are coming out that, that helps mariachi directors be able to teach mariachi by notes learning. Now, obviously it's not gonna be the, uh, the real authentic thing because authentic is rote learning. Um, but I want you guys to know that there's materials out there that will teach you in what we call like a hybrid model, like a note and rote learning, okay? Um, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, let's demonstrate these two instruments in action. I have a short video for you guys. I'm not gonna play the entire thing because it's, it, it's, it'll be too long. But this is a high school mariachi group basically featuring these two instruments. This song is called El Cascabel, uh, which translates to the, the rattle, the rattle of the rattlesnake. Uh, and this group is up in Stockton. What you're hearing right now is the vihuela.
All right, unfortunately, I have to pause it there because it's, it's going to get too lengthy. But I think you guys got an idea of how these instruments sound like. The, the vihuela had a lot of really crazy manicos in there, strumming patterns, um, and, and extended techniques that you would normally find in like flamenco playing, um, like muting the strings or maybe even fanning out the strings. A lot of like unusual techniques. Um, the guitarron, this player actually was doing the double stops, and there's some section was actually single stopping some of the notes as well. He was playing like single single note note lines in there, which is really really cool. Um, but that's basically a demo of uh, how those instruments sound like. Um, and these are high school students. This is a group, uh, Mariachi Chavez from uh, Chavez High School in Stockton, California. Uh, let's move on. All right, so uh, uh, really quick, you guys heard a couple benefits from the video that we saw earlier with. Um, with uh, Monaco Middle School. Um, here's a couple other benefits that I've kind of acquired. Now, this could should be a multiple like slides. Um, I kind of just crunch it up in one slide, but uh, let me just go ahead and just talk about some of these points, okay? Reaches underrepresented students in music. I I brushed a little bit on this and I was talking about uh, music programs. Um, you know, you, 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 as, as students progress, as they find their pathway, the Latinos kind of dwindle. Once they get to the high school level, you barely see any Hispanics playing in there. And mariachi is just a way for them to kind of grab the Latinos and get them more involved into music, okay? Um, even in, um, even in, in schools like my school, which my school is like, my district is like 95% Hispanic. Um, you're getting to see a lot more Latinos taking music because they see mariachi. Mariachi is part of their, their folklore, the part of the, part of the music that, that, uh, that they grew up listening to. It's music that their parents listen to. It's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a way for them to express themselves um, in a way that, that no other genre is going like, it, it's, it's to help them express themselves. It's, just, it's extremely unique to, to, to their beings. Um, uh, keep students in school. Obviously, the, the more music programs, the more um, activities that they're in school, they're going to stay in school. Um, I always get, my students always get the, um, uh, how, would you, how would I describe this? They always get like the notion of always being the bad kids in school. All of the bad kids in school are in my classroom. And it's, it's, it's crazy because I, I talk to other teachers or I talk to admins and they're always going to say, oh my gosh, that Juan, like, he, he's always like acting up in lunch. He's always getting into fights. And I'm always like, wait, which one are you talking about? You mean Juan, this one in my class? Dude, that kid is like the best like guitarron player in my class. Like, why do you want to send him to detention? Like, just send him to my class. If he's like acting up, just have him come to my classroom. Like, I'll have him do something, you know? He's a great kid in my class. But it's just, it's just so interesting how um, the worst kids, the kids that do bad in school, they, they do excellent in mariachi. So um, anyways, th that's that's basically that point. I don't know, Ramon, if you want to interject in any of these points with personal experiences, like go for it. Um, uh, effective, well, go for it. I, I included some documentary. I have a documentary called Mariachi Wenachi, and it's there, it talks about uh, families that, um, the whole family, it talks, they actually film the kid from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, which is really, really cool. And also there was a, a King 5 news story about my program in Wenatchee. But really, guys, we're talking about cultural pride, self-esteem, um, pride in your school, pride in your, th uh, in your community. There's no other better recipe than mariachi music. Um, with my program in Wenatchee and my program here in Mount Vernon, you want, uh, we have a 100% graduation rate in the mariachi program because kids are involved. I don't care if they're involved in cheerleading. I don't call them they're involved in um, chess club. It's all about having positive outlets for our students. And now uh, nothing's better than having a mariachi program because what it benefits the most the families because it's hard to get families to come to parent nights or parent meetings or any kind of meetings. But if they know their students are performing that night, they will come. Our concerts, I know Oscar's concerts are packed. I've been to the Las Vegas ones, they're packed. They have to do two shows because there's so many families that wanna come. I really think it's important for us to have that family engagement because mariachi music is not just for, um, older adults or a certain demographic it's from grandma to the five-year-old everybody gets to be part of the mariachi concert and you don't have to be uh latino mexican uh, salvadorian to enjoy the mariachi concert ha a lot of the tickets are non uh, latino student a lot of pe people that come to the concert so um it's a great way to branch out 
and expand your music program. So, and I'm going to be talking about that in the next couple slides. Yeah, and, and you know, to add to that, you know, mariachi music, there's no generation gap. Okay, it, the music that the the students will be learning is the students that their parents grew up listening to. So it, it's just it's an easy way for to you know to find common knowledge between the parent and the students, uh, which is it just makes mariachi just so much easier to manage because you get the parents just involved automatically and again admins use mariachi for like you know pta meetings like anytime they want to get the community involved they use mariachi as the, the catalyst to bring everybody um in the community together uh learning of lifelong life skills i mean this could be like any uh music program because marching band also teaches this but in mariachi i mean you also teach students to you know to be punctual uh to be presentable to make sure when they're wearing their suits that it's clean it's not dirty that they you know they they brush their hair that they you know they 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 prepare it teaches them a lot of uh, uh a lot of life skills how to uh present themselves in front of people because you want to make sure that your students are presentable because they're they're ambassadors for your school district right so when they're outside in the community you want to make sure that they're behave the, the best um as possible to give a give off a good image for your district so uh, sometimes we even teach them like how to like stand you know like if you look at the photos that i have here in the bottom those are my students you can tell like they have like this kind of like po like you know, they have this stance, like they're confident, right? And if you get to know these kids, you know, before, like in mariachi class, they're extremely confident to express themselves how they like to express themselves. If you see these same students in like English or math, they have, they're like, they scrunch over, they're like really shy. Um, they're not as, they don't feel as free to kind of be like how they are. But in mariachi, they're just like, yeah, they're, they're kids, you know, they're, they're who they are. Um, so mariachi kind of, gives them that that empowerment um, that kind of connects to increasing students self-esteem and self-confidence uh, celebration of culture and heritage i mean that kind of goes hand in hand with mariachi music it being so prominent in in uh, mexican culture um, and not only that but i also had a couple like asian kids um, do mariachi and they also feel very um very proud of learning about their their friends their colleagues culture and they they're also very culturally enriched and stimulated so um it's not just hispanics that we're talking about it's also other um ethnic groups okay uh what happened to my slideshow how come it disappeared i don't know i think i clicked the wrong button but while they all do right. that <laughs> he's going to bring up the slideshow again i just want to give a shout out to all the people that are participating in this this is awesome i see uh jennifer i see kevin i see jamie i see kelly i see bill i see jennifer alexia sue i probably won't remember i don't get everybody but i i love it that we have people from uh, uh, the suburbs of Chicago, from Arkansas to Oregon to California to Madeira to New Jersey to also, um, is that Minnesota, I think? Uh, Maryland, New York, Wilmington, New Jersey, Chicago, and Canada. We have a person that's watching us again. Oh, Tennessee, uh, Tennessee, and, uh, and Chicago. Okay, I just want to give a shout out because we're uh, so we're going to go to the next slides. And um, Oscar did a great job explaining about mariachi and Denver. Got to give a shout out to Denver, um, the Rocky Mountains. So our next slide is I'm going to be talking about a little bit about how you could include mariachi in your school and how you could mix high sort of hybrid band mariachi orchestra together and what we why I really joined Mount Vernon High School. So these are some of my students. Um, I'm at a new school this year. Of course, we're teaching online. But if you look on there, we have a student that's American. We also have a folklorico program, and I could talk to you about folklorico. We also, which is a class, um, and they could have. And then also, we have this one. I just really like that she has a uh, a lizard on her on her shirt. I just thought it was cool. She said, "Can I take a picture with my pet?" Absolutely. Okay, so I want to talk to you a little bit about. Um, the demographics that we have at Mount Vernon High School. This is Sophia, and you could tell the pride and how much she loves to take. I mean, yearbook picture, 100% of the kids showed up for yearbook pictures because they wanted to show their guitar and wanted to show how prideful they are. But um, as you look at our school, uh, the male, female, but 54% of our school is Hispanic, La Latino, mostly Mexican. Um, uh, a lot of our students come from Oaxaca, which is a state in Mexico. But um, but we have students that are not Latino 
that are in it are not in the mariachi program. So all this happened didn't happen in one year. The one the program that you saw with Oscar that did not happen overnight. It took a couple years of building and stuff, but that's the final product. I mean, what what Oscar has is you know great. It's great to see that. So it starts out small, and that's what we're doing right here. So if you look how everything grows, I put um, how it started in it, at this school from 2009 to 2020 and how um, it just started with a ba band, orchestra, jazz band, and a music appreciation class. And now it looks like next year we're gonna be having to add, we're gonna have five music teachers next year because they see what a big deal is to have a mariachi at their school. Everything grows because of this. So I wanted to share with you the sort of what the schedule looks like and what the other teachers do. And so we're doing something really unique at, at Mount Vernon High School because uh, what's uh, unique about it is that if you look right here, we have the mariachi and the string orchestra at the same time. So the students that are in the string orchestra are also in the mariachi. So the string orchestra has its own teacher, but so I really just work with the guitars and the, the vihuelas and the guitarrones and the trumpets. And all the students in the string orchestra have to learn the mariachi songs. So I don't really have to spend time working with the violins. And then since it's the same period, we combine together and have the mariachi and the orchestra uh, and the violins come over. So it gives the orchestra double the amount of performances, double the amount of opportunities, and they get to be on both teams. And if you look, um, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Omar right here, he also helps out with the trumpets. So he's the band teacher. So I'm very lucky to have the band teacher help me, the orchestra teacher help me and me, and then uh, the, or the choir teacher is free that period too. So he helps with vocals. So it's a great way of like collaborating. If you have that situation where you could do like the orchestra and mariachi at the same time. And my advanced group, the chamber orchestra, which is the smaller orchestra, combines with uh, the advanced mariachi class and does things together. So um, I think this is like really unique and thinking outside the box. And so what happened was when we did this, we did a lot of crossover, right? We did a lot of crossover where we did, um, you know, combined trips with the band and mariachi. And we did a jazz and mariachi night. And we also did our fight song in Spanish and English. And, and I, I could get you the, the link to that. And also our booster club is called The Bomb, which is called the Band Orchestra Mariachi Boosters. So we all get to raise the money together and we're all united because what happened was in the other school that I used to work at, they're like, the mariachi program's here, the band's here, the choir's here, the orchestra here, and you're all your individual programs. But with this idea, we're able to work together and the, the music teachers work together and we, if the mariachi is successful, we all win. If the band is successful, we all win. The orchestra, and most of our students are in multiple ensembles, which are band, choir, orchestra. So they could take two music classes. So they don't have to decide, because that's what happens a lot in a lot of schools that students have to decide where to go. If you now, so the, we had a virtual graduation last year, and I wanted to show you what collaboration really looks like. So we did Let It Be by the Beatles. And we did it with the mariachi, the choir, the orchestra, and the band. And if you could look, this is a picture from the video. This is the choir student. This is a mariachi student. This is an orchestra student. This is um, uh, the, the mariachi student. And if you look at the students, it's very, very diverse, right? It's not all Latino students out there. We had American students. We had African-American students. We had uh, Latino students. So it's a great way. Uh, it's a great model to use. Like if you need help doing this and I can show you all about that. And so what we could talk about, and I'll go to that slide next, is that collaboration is important. I think a lot of times that we get stuck in, I'll just do this. Um, a lot of times, and you probably have to bring this back in a minute, but I think a lot of times that we look as mariachi program as its own entity, but I think it can be expanded where you could have it's okay for the orchestra students to play mariachi. You want it, you want your band students to play mariachi. I have a student uh, this year 
who's in jazz band, band, wind ensemble, and mariachi. And when he auditioned for colleges, he got a big scholarship of like 33,000 because he could be playing in the mariachi orchestra band. I want my students to be all around good musicians. I don't want them just to be a good mariachi. I want them to be a good orchestra and good sight reader and good that. So I think we're doing something really, really special. And this is something that you could include in your curriculum. And so I have a lot of music to share. I have a lot of resources to share. I have a lot of books I could share. I put my email there below. But right now, I think your best bet is to use KHS America. And KHS America could could contact me or Oscar and we would we could work with your school we could help it I help programs in San Diego New York um, uh, uh, Nashville uh, Oregon and they just need someone to consult you right uh, to help you get it started so I help stu uh, I know Oscar could help you I could help you you just need to reach out to KHS and they can make that happen so that as an educational consultant we want to see mariachi everywhere and that's our goal is to see mariachi everywhere in every state and every in every community because we know the power of mariachi. The power of mariachi helps students graduate. They help them be successful. They help them to be leaders. It's the best leadership program out there. And we promise if you could read a score, the Hal Leonard has music. Some of the other major publishers have music. And we and Oscar and I have tons of music that we would love to share with you. If you could read a score, all you would have to learn is the guitarron and the vihuela. But you learned in, in your music educational classes how to teach strings, how to teach guitar. And then some of my, I've taught teachers that don't speak Spanish. And that's okay. You don't have to speak Spanish to teach mariachi, but you might need the help of a para. You might help of a of uh, one of your students to help lead. You know, I think this would be an awesome. Thank you, Jerry. Great session. I love it. We got some comments, but um, so when we go to the next one, we're gonna talk about collaboration and how mariachi doesn't just play three chords and sing Celito Lindo and La Bamba and La Cucaracha. It's more than that, just that, right? It's not It's not just, we, we get stereotyped as the music in the Taco Bell commercial and that's not, if you see Mariachi Sol de Mexico, Mariachi Los Camperos, Mariachi Vargas, those guys are real musicians. And they could play uh, as good. Jose Hernandez is probably one of the best trumpet players, not just in Mariachi, but in the world. And because um, I, I, Oscar and I have worked with Jose, and he is like uh, out of the best, out of the trumpet players in the world, probably the, in the top five. And he's a Mariachi. But he, nobody could say this guy can't play because he's that talented. Um, he's that amazing. And I know uh, he's an idol to us and idol to mariachi education. But um, and he's another person to bring on when you're starting program because he's just a genius in mariachi. So um, I know your next part is the video, right? You have a video. And I, I again, I took the, the PowerPoint yeah. off, but, yeah. but, <laughs> uh, but that's OK. We'll, we'll do this. But um, so Education through music, Los Angeles, shout out to you, you know. Uh, before we uh, start with this, I kind of wanted to expand on what Ramon was saying about collaborating. Um, I, I work in a conservatory where, you know, I have, there's an orchestra program, there's a band program, there's a choir program, and it's extremely important to work with your colleagues, your other music teachers, um, because, you know, mariachi music, as, as unfortunate as it is, um, some other teachers don't see mariachi music as being like a viable music art form. They, they just don't see it. Like they hear mariachi, they hear it, they hear loud, they hear a lot of vibrato, they don't hear bland, they hear, you know, intonation issues, um, they hear people screaming when they're singing. The thing is that they probably have never heard a good mariachi before. And, and they've gotten a pretty bad preconceived notion of what mariachi actually is. Um, and the other thing is that, you know, mariachi does call for some really unusual stylistic techniques that might uh, make a classical, tr a classically trained uh, musician kind of cringe. Um, and it's, it's really important to kind of establish good relationship with your colleagues because you're going to have to borrow the same students and you have to come into a common ground on what's acceptable technique wise. So that the, so that student can be successful both in the orchestra program per se and in mariachi or trumpet player that they're successful in the band program and in mariachi. Um, but yeah, it's just really, really important to collaborate. Um, also as a recruitment tool, this is, it's, it, 
like crucial that you that you collaborate because that's where you're going to get your students from. That's 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 how you're going to build your program from the orchestra band and choirs. Um, some collaboration ideas that you can try is that you can find arrangements that work for those. Right now for graduation, we're actually doing like the alma mater. We're doing the Star Spangled Banner. We're doing it with band, mariachi, orchestra, and choir. We're combining everybody together into a virtual video. Um, but it's really, really easy to start out with. It's really easy to get a collaboration going with choir and mariachi and strings with mariachi because those instruments are really, you know, they're, they're, they, they borrow from each other. The choirs can sing the main lyrics and the mariachi can be the accompaniment to it. For, for a string ensemble, you can literally have the entire string orchestra play the string parts. You just arrange it for, for string orchestra and you have the singers and the, the guitarists, the trumpets, the part of the mariachi play the other parts. So um, when you see these collaborations in concerts, the parents are going to see, oh, wow, there's a mariachi program and they're going to ask their students or they're going to request that their students join the mariachi. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and move on because we, we don't have a whole lot of time. And honestly, I think, um, I, I, Ramon, I don't know how you feel, but you think it'd be good if we open up for questions? I, I know you yeah. have more slides. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good. Yeah. I really, this... This today's session is goal is to give you some motivation and give you the resources that you need to start it. Because I know the hardest thing is taking that first step and saying, I'm going to start a mariachi program. And um, it's, it's really tough at the beginning just to take that first step and be brave, be brave to do it. But with the help of KHS America and HE Menace Guitars, we are, um, they're two mariachi consultants and we could help you. And I've helped um, programs and, they, and we have instruments. What I wanna tell you before, before we start on questions is just to give a shout out to KHS America and their instruments, but we've been working hard for the last five years to have sort of a mariachi in a box program. We have uh, KHS America and, and HE Menes has uh, the guitarron, the vihuela, the trumpet, the violin, all in a package from the same company. And I helped one school in Eastern Washington that ordered a set of 20 instruments. And now they started their program and they were all KHS America instruments. So I, I will make sure that's there and that we could connect and uh, do that later. But um, I know we only have like 10 minutes or so. So I really want you to, if you have questions for me and Oscar about starting mariachi, about being in mariachi, about where we begin any the, it's open forum please ask us because that's why we're here to help there there was a question uh how do you feel about non-hispanic latino students performing mariachi music i have an interest in support from parents and administrators administrators but i want to be sensitive to historical and cultural context and cultural appropriation yeah so i it's a really important uh, you know question asked that's actually a really really good question you don't want obviously you don't want to offend anybody by you know teaching mariachi incorrectly um but i i have to say that you know hispanics were a little a lot of hispanics are really embarrassed to kind of show their true cultures to americans because they're afraid that they're not going to accept them so when hispanics actually see that non-hispanics are playing their music and liking it it actually gives like Latinos like a sense of pride and joy that, wow, these people like these Americans are actually accepting our, our music, um, you know, so I, I wouldn't be too worried about that if that's what's holding you back. But I do understand the part about the appropriation, because um, even if you look at jazz studies, if you listen to like Dixieland or like Louis Armstrong or the way they played back in the day, like back in the 20s, it's very different than what you hear today in modern jazz where, um, you know, the players have more technique per se, they went to school, they were taught to play a certain way, it's no longer authentic like the way jazz used to be. Mariachi is kind of going through that same phase where it's becoming very modernized. Um, there's new chords being introduced. Um, there's classical violinists recording the most modern, like Mariachi Sol de Mexico and Mariachi Camperos, the two biggest groups that today, I played, I played, I played, with, well, I played with one of them and I rehearsed with another. I can say that you know most of those musicians are classically trained now, so a lot of that that technique kind of seeps into the mariachi style, mm -hmm. and the mariachi is modernizing; it's changing. But you don't want it to go so far that it just becomes um, it, it doesn't become appropriate, and it actually becomes kind of offensive. Um, you just want to be careful with that. Um, that question is a little harder to answer because you do need somebody like an authentic 
educator to kind of help you and guide you through that. But again, KHS and, and you know, and us two consultants, we'd be very, very happy to um, show you some resources, teach you um, what you could do to your programs for it to be more, more authentic. But your parents are going to love it regardless if it's authentic or not. They're, they're going to see, wow, they're playing El Rey. That's, that's, that's amazing. Let's go to this PTA meeting or let's go to this concert and check it out. Uh, Ramon, I don't know if you want to add to that or if anybody has another question that needs uh, to be no, answered. I, I agree. You you just want to get kids hooked. It's um, Mark Fulquist says it's the best. He said you want to give them mariachi fever, right? You want to give them mariachi fever, which is that you get them excited about the music. And it doesn't matter what color you are as long as you love the music. Like I have a student that's African-American. She goes, I'm black. I, I don't know. I don't love the music. I said, no, you don't. You just, you just, do you like me? Do you like playing the music? I go, yeah, it doesn't matter. So I, I, again, uh, a lot of it's, I know it's cultural appropriation, but we could help you that you could send us an email. Hey, do you think this is too much? You know, and we'll give you the, the, the answer pretty quickly. Or sometimes you could ask the students, do, what do you think? This is too much, you know, or a parent or, a, 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 you know, cause I get that all the time. Is this a Hispanic thing? Is this, is this okay to, to do? And I say, Sometimes I do. I say no, no, that's offensive or not. So it's 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 always good to ask. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's a, maybe some other questions to kind of answer. Um, I what I did was I know there's a lot of questions and I'm trying um, to go through them. Um, but what method books? I don't know. Uh, that's a good thing because there's different kind of method books, which um, there's one by Jeff Naveen. There's one by. Um, Different, different things. I don't know. I, I sort of have my own because I just collected from the best and I stole what I like and I could share that with you. I made a middle school book that's pretty good um, that I use as a lot of songs and rhythms. I don't know. What do you use, Oscar? Yeah, so uh, method books are tough. Um, so th there are a couple. The Jeff Nevin one is pretty good. Um, there's another one called Simplemente Mariachi as well. Um, the, the thing is that, you know, mariachi has its mainstreaming. There's more material that's just kind of getting out there, um, helping out educators um, who just aren't familiar with the music. Um, with me, I'm kind of an unusual case because since I grew up with this music and I studied it, um, I actually written my own like materials for my students to learn from. You can say that I kind of written my own method book. I don't mind sharing what I have. Um, I've, I've kind of took a... Um, uh, oh shoot! I for, I'm forgetting. There's this famous um, marching band method book. Uh, circ uh, I, I, I forget what it is, but there was this really famous. There's a really famous uh, marching band method book that um, that is used by like all marching band directors. And I kind of got that idea and kind of like mariachiized it. And so I created my own like method book that I use like warm ups for mariachi, like playing certain scales with certain chord progressions, um, you know, uh, certain techniques in the trumpets, like the way they vibrato, the way they articulate, the way violins vibrato, um, stuff like that. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy to share that stuff with what, you. What we um, could do is Oscar and I could put a Google Drive to get a Google Drive file together for this presentation. If you came today and uh, I know Rick uh, will, and Jennifer will send us a list of the participants in the email. And, you know, the power of Google Drive. That's what I love, Google Drive. I save everything through Google Drive. I don't know. I know I think Oscar does too because if you have an educational account, it's unlimited. So, you know, my home one, I only get 15 gigs, but my my school one, it's forever. So I, I, I did it for another presentation. And Oscar and I, give us a couple days to get that together um, and we could uh, email that out to you and um, so that I, I don't send a whole bunch of different files. Hey guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in here. Uh, great presentation. We will stay on a little bit longer. We have some great questions in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe you're not seeing them all and just throw these out to you real quickly. Sure. And then sure. I'll, I'll do a little conclusion here. One of them was asking about getting uniform, but they're just starting out. Where can you do something like that? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, uh, Ramon, you want me to go for that? So, uh, okay, so it depends on if you really want like the really, the professional uniforms, like what Oscar got. And there's also companies like, you know, Mariachi Connection that have the basic uniform on there. Uniforms is a hard thing because, you know, there isn't like the company that would recommend number one, but there are companies that could make you the basic one. And if you want to go all out, so sometimes people get confused because they look at the Las Vegas one and want to buy it in them. And those are like seven, $800. And I really suggest if you have a beginning program, not buy those because your, your students shouldn't, but we could, 
Um, I could show you, there's a measuring form that I could send you that I used for the students to get measured. And I could give you two or three companies that I use. And then, I don't know, do you listen, use La Casa de Mariachi or do you use other uh, vendors? Yeah. So it's a little tough when you're talking about school districts uh, purchasing instruments because a lot of the times they ask for like a W-9 and they want like a business license. They want the purchase to be, you know, legit, right? Um, and it makes it hard because these suits, they're like, if you buy them from a U.S. store, they go from anywhere from like $800 to like $1,200 a suit. And that's just a suit. You, you still need to buy the boots. You need to buy the belt. You need to buy like the bow tie. You need to buy the sombreros. Like you need to buy everything. Now, um, I live in Southern California, which is right on the other side of Mexico. And there are a couple of vendors that, um, that, you know, drive from TJ up to Los Angeles and take orders and they make them down there. The same suit in the in here in the U.S. would cost like twelve hundred dollars a suit, like a student. This TJ guy would do it for like four hundred dollars. So um, when you're talking about that drastic of a difference, um, it's it's really it's it's much better to just go with the TJ guy. Um, now I can send I can send you the guy's information. Um, if you type in Mariachi Clothing Company in San Diego, that guy basically works as the middleman for that one guy from TJ, he basically just asked for like a little transaction fee to, to, you know, for the W nine business license type deal to present that he basically asked for a little fee, but it's very, very little. Like you're still getting a really good deal out of that. Again, it's the Marechi clothing store in San Diego. Um, that, that's the one I, I would recommend if you want like a pro end, um, suits, obviously if, if, if you're just starting out and you're working with middle school kids and you want something that's, you know, really quick, you're only do, you're only going to do a couple presentations a year. Um, Marisha connection is, is also a good, uh, resource. They're, they're fast. They're, they're already are, they've, they've already set up for, for school purchase orders. So they've already, they're, they're the easiest guys to kind of go through and they're inexpensive, but, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you here. I'm just yeah. trying to move these along. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, just some quick answers here. So Kelly, who's an orchestra teacher asked, do you ever in include other instruments, be string instruments besides violins? In the mariachi? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've included flutes. Um, I've included the string bass. I've included, I honestly, all the, all the orchestra instruments I've included in mariachi. Um, obviously I, I name it string achi because you know, <laughs> it's, it's it's funny um but um but yeah you, you can include them in the mariachi program but honestly if if for I, I would say that since cello viola are very very similar to the violin just have the student learn violin yeah what, what, I, what i would do is like i told you we have the orchestra and mariachi meet the cellos play the guitar own part and the basses play the guitar own part and you could do it that way um but um, most of the instruments, like you said, you could add flute, um, you could have the clarinets play the trumpet part, uh, but you, again, you try to keep it as traditional as possible. So, um, but if, if that's what you have, that's what you have, you know, and we, you work with it. Yeah. Here's another one. I can almost answer this one too. It says we are looking to instruct future teachers of rural programs. Would mariachi be a good fit for a rural school music program? Uh, usually in rural areas, you get more of those authentic Latinos, like the ones like who are who just immigrated from Mexico. I would say yes. I mean, Wenatchee is that, isn't that like a yeah? So like I, I so both both town? towns that I live in is uh, Wenatchee is where the apple. Most of my students worked in the apples, cherries, and pears. So they were agricultural workers. In the documentary, that I said you could see that. And also right now, where I am in Mount Vernon, is another place where they work in the tulips and the celeries and the different agricultural areas. So like I saw somebody from Madeira, like Fresno, that that's another area of, of big agricultural workers. So if you would like um, more information, I know I can't answer all the questions. I, I've been getting your emails. I got 12 emails right now, but that's good. Keep <laughs> on sending them because I really want to give you that answer because in a, a one minute answer is not long enough. You know, keep on sending them. Um, two more real quick. Uh, my son is a professional trombonist who teaches students who get into the best music schools after high school. He plays many styles, but cannot do the mariachi brass sound. Do you really think that band directors can do this if he can't? Um, the, I, I think, I think he could do it. Um, I, he, he may need some help uh, from authentic, from like another 
teacher, like a like an assistant per se. I know before I got hired at Santa High School, the previous band director was a clarinetist, and he had no mariachi experience, but he was still able to start the mariachi program, and he was still able to teach mariachi just fine. Um, 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 I would listen to I, what I would do is get some mariachi CDs and or di um, Spotify or whatever you do and try to match the sound of, of Sol de Mexico or Mariachi Los Camperos. I'd go to the their easy songs like Arboles La Barranca or Celito Lindo and just try to copy their sound because that's what I did with one band director because I, I sound like an orchestra player playing mariachi and I said, I said, here's Jose Hernandez, copy him because if you could be as good as if you could get that sound like Jose and he's the gold standard, right, Oscar? I mean, I wish I could sound like this much as good as him, but yeah. he, he's the gold standard. So, and we'll send you, you Jose Hernandez, um, Mariachi Sol de Mexico, um, Mariachi Los Camperos, just copy their sound and I think you could do it. And, and when he says copy the sound, like I mean copy the sound. Like I, mm -hmm. I saw Jose yesterday, I actually take lessons from him. And yesterday during our lesson, he made me copy his sound exactly. His vibrato speed, um, the the how much articulation, his cutoffs, uh, the way he breathes. Like that's what I'm talking about. Detailed, at, like analyzing, copying, and you know replaying. Like you need to copy note by note, um, articulation, articulation, vibrato, tone color, everything, every single like concept, musical concept. Copy it. That's what we mean by copy their sound. And uh, Oscar and uh, Ramon, if you can see the Sambo's question there, if you want to answer that. Mm. Um, you teach uh, a lot of Indian students. Have you ever encountered cases being discriminated against by brown Mexicans or other brown Latinos for being Native Americans in the mariachi world? Have you ever had to deal with such issues? Um, because half my school, uh, or a quarter of the school, the students are from Oaxaca, and Oaxaca has their own unique, um, they're more indigenous Mexicans, where it's, they have that discrimination, and some of them don't speak Spanish, they speak um, Mixteco, and uh, we have, the, and there's 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 Trig and there's Misteco Bajo and Misteco Alto. And so there's a lot of division there, but I could just, I would, this is a great way to bring that community together and say, you know, hey, uh, I did a series and I'll send it to you um, in that packet is we did a series about uh, indigenous people from Oaxaca. And so we talked about the culture and the music and all that. So a great song that you could use is called Cancio Mixteca. And Cancio Mixteca is the song from Oaxaca. I mean, and every mariachi plays it. So if you could use that song, and the words are beautiful, the, the song is beautiful, and it talks, and it's the national anthem of Oaxaca. So if that'd be a great way of bringing it because every, Everybody in Mexico loves Cancio Mixteca. So it's a great song. And I know Oscar has played it a thousand times with his group. And it's a great way of bringing them together. So that's what I would suggest. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And especially to our great clinicians, Oscar and Ramon. Um, I do want to mention, uh, if you can see it there on the screen, our next week's event. Uh, again, it'll be at the same time, 6 o'clock. Uh, did it go away? Let me see if I can pull that up again. It wasn't showing up on my end. We have a jazz clinic next week. Um, again, I'm not seeing it. But either way, um, join us here again at 6 o'clock uh, next week. That is Central Standard Time. And as both Oscar and um, Ramon suggested, that if you have a large school district that is thinking of putting something like this together, feel free to reach out to us and we will bring one or both of them. We like them to go around to work with other uh, school districts because we see the value and everything that mariachi music can do for students. And these are two of the best and we would love to share their knowledge with anyone out there that would like to take advantage of that. And also to let you know that all of our video series tonight included and the previous six that we had um, are all available in archived and uh, you can see it there we'll have a replay of this webinar and all our other ones there at the academicalliance.com you can see the link right there so with that i will sign off and i will let oscar and ramon say their goodbyes um i want to thank my 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 friend oscar we've only known each other we've known each other like 
over, we heard about each other, but we never got to work together. So it's been an honor to work with you, Oscar. And um, our goal is just for more kids to learn mariachi music. That's all we want. That's all I want you to do. And I will give you, I'm a teacher too. And that's what I do. I teach seven periods. I want to share my resources with you. I'm not like a teacher that wants to hold these resources and nobody learned it. I'll share it. And, and Oscar and I will get a Google Drive together and we would love to, to share with you. If you have any questions, I left, I'll see you on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, thank you guys and thank you KHS America for having us here. Thank you, Ramon. Uh, I picked up some new stuff from you today. So oh, thank um, you. I so really, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, the questions you guys asked were very, very nice questions as well. I mean, some of them got me a little on my feet too. Um, <laughs> but trust me, like like Ramon was saying, like our job is to spread the gospel of, of mariachi education. Um, we're we're going to tell you how it is. Um, both of us have um, you know, authentic experience teaching mariachi and, you know, can, can, can help you in your programs. All we want to do is help. So, um, if you have any other questions, you can reach, you can reach us in our emails. Um, you can follow me, uh, through my Facebook, my students' Facebook account, which is mariachi Los Santos, uh, the saints pretty much, or you can just type in mariachi Santa Ana high school, Santa Ana, California, obviously. Um, but thank you so much. Thank you for being here. And I'm looking forward for the next time. Thank you. <laughs>